So how to close a sale and handle objection will be our point of discussion today. So before I start, I want to ask each and every one of us, what is sales closing? Because I believe each and every one of you that, we, that is in this room right now, is either you're a business person or you're an entrepreneur, whatever you're doing, you are selling something. So when you're selling something, you already know the meaning of sales. If not, you won't be here. Because I believe I'm speaking to salespeople irrespective of whatever business or model of business that you're doing, be it product or service. So what is sales closing? Now, sales closing is the sum total of everything you do towards guiding a potential prospect in making a buying decision. That's a whole summary of what sales closing is all about. Okay, so closing is everything you do for a prospect towards making a buying decision. Now, I need you to imagine that you are you are you are done with your business presentation and you have gotten the prospects or the audience to make a buying decision now sales closing is your ability to ask for the money which a lot of people are shy to ask for the money you see a lot of people they've presented their business they've presented their service they've, they've presented their products but when it comes to asking for money they become shy which is very very bad all right, because a transaction can only be completed when an action is taken on a buying decision, which in exchange money is given for the value that is being offered. So a transaction is not completed until money has been exchanged for the value that is being given, either through goods or through services, whichever form of products that you're selling. So what are what then? Okay, so what then are the elements involved in closing a sale? Because if you understand that sales closing is your ability to get your prospective um, buyer, your ideal customer or your ideal audience, if you're having a presentation, to make a buying decision. And not just making a buying decision, for them to exchange their money for the value you're offering them. Then, if you understand that, the next question you should be asking yourself is, what are the elements involved in closing a sale? There are a lot of elements involved in closing a sale, but today we are going to focus on just four different elements. Okay, so at which point do you need to close a sale? There are different parts of sales closing. When you, when you are trying to sell in the sales process, there are different parts. Okay, but I won't want to go into the entire um, discussion on the sales process, but today I want us to focus on the four stages of sales, which include the build-up stage, the pitch presentation stage, the offer stage, and the closing stage. All right. So when you know the anatomy of a sale, you will have the ability to guide your prospects to making a buying decision by building them up through a tailored presentation process to a point where you get them to take action. And that's what a sales process is all about. So I need you to bear in mind that everything that happens in a sales process is an intentional act. Is intentional. You don't close a sales without being intentional. There is no guesswork in selling. You must follow these four stages, knowingly or knowingly. Either you've mastered it and it's not part of you, but you know that that is the due procedure. All right. So let's dive into that. The first stage is the build-up stage. In this build-up stage, this is where you spice up the interest of the people you are about to sell to, either by making them excited or on the curiosity of the information that you are about to present to them. This build up stage is where you build up and pile up interest in which you are about to sell. So sometimes I call this build up stage the excitement stage where you get them excited about the information. All right, so that's the first stage. The second stage is the sales speech. Now in the sales speech, this is the second part of the sale. Here is where you can talk about the product or the services that you want to sell. All right, that's for the sales speech. Now, the third stage is the offer. The offer is where you give them a reason why they cannot do without your product or service. You need to think about the need that your customers what that your customers have or will be needing. The need that your customers will have and need when they are using your product or service. What are the typical need? That your customer need why using your product and once you figure that out create an offer around it then sell it to them remember i always tell us don't sell your product or service rather what you should do is to sell an offer okay so that is the third stage now the first stage is the closing stage now in the closing stage here is where you determine 
um, the amount of money that they pay. In the closing stage, this is where you demand for the money in their pocket. You demand for them to drop the money in their pocket to exchange for either the product or the services in form of an offer that you are giving to them. Okay, so I need you to know that it's not in all the cases that you follow these four stages, the excitement stage, the build up stage, the sales stage, the offer, the sales speech stage, the offer stage and the closing stage. You mustn't follow them pari passu because most at times your prospect may approach you in a, in a form of a pre-closed nature. All right, so you just need your the, when when they are um, when they approach you in a form of a pre-closed nature, all what they need is just your validation, because they've already gone through the first two stages of your sales process before meeting you. It could be through a webinar you did, through a video, or through a sales um, a new a, a sales letter a VSL a sales letter that you did now they are now coming to you because they've been exposed already all what they need is your validation and your assurance for them to go ahead and do what and make their payment okay so the four stages of sales have their individual role that they play the build up stage is where you increase and spark up the interest and curiosity of your prospects the goal here is for you to make people excited to actually want to do more to actually want to hear more and know more about what you're talking about all right so the sales speech stage is the second part of the sales process i know a lot of people are always scared to close a sale because they are afraid of rejection they are afraid of the no people will say to them but see let me tell you guys you don't need to feel guilty or bad when people say no to you it only means that they are not your ideal customer and they are not saying no to you but they are saying no to themselves. So don't feel bad. The more no's you receive, the closer you are to your yes. So every no you receive, you need to be happy and excited. All right? So that is it about that. Don't be scared of no. Go for the close. Demand for the money. Okay? So closing is everything that you need to do to make your prospect take action on a buying decision. Closing is applied in areas where you already know that your prospects have taken a buying decision on your product or your service or your or your offer. Either by saying that they will buy when they have money, when their salary arrives, or they are saying that they don't have enough money right now to take action to buy your product or your service. Okay, so you need to know that when people say that they don't have money right now, it means that they have taken a buying decision already. They are interested. They want to buy, but they don't have the money to buy right now and would have taken action on their buying decision, but they don't have the money to buy right now. Now, when people say this to you, this is what we call an objection. So it's your duty as a salesperson to guide them to a point where they can take action on their decision, which is a positive buying decision. All right. So when a prospect says, I don't have money right now, I need you to know that this is a common objection that people give as to why they cannot buy from you immediately. It's a common objection. I don't have money right now. It's a common objection. Okay. So here is how you can handle this objection. First, you need to establish where they are right now financially by asking them few questions you could ask them how much can you how much can you raise right now or how much do you have right now how much can you afford right now once they tell you then you say to them you could you can tell them okay if this is the amount for example let's say for example what you're selling to them is 70,000 and right now they have 20,000. You can tell them, okay, you would like to help them by creating an installment payment plan where they can pay two or three times. And trust me, once you give people this option, they take it as long as they've made a buying decision. Okay, so I need you to know that objection handling is a huge part of sales closing because you can only close a sale after you must have tackled all the objection that your prospective client or your prospective customer have. Now, objections are those silent questions that your customers have within them. Some of them may be quiet, they won't ask why some of them will ask, but it's your duty to handle this objection during your sales closing. All right, so objection handling is a big part of sales closing trust me when i say that is a very big part professional sales closers handle and tackle the objection during their sales process during the presentation 
they they kind of have a reverse psychology they sit down with themselves and research on what are the possible ways why my customer will not buy they list them and they handle them in the process of their presentation so at the end when they demand for the for the money and the demand when they demand for the money their audience their prospective buyers have already made a buying decision and they go ahead paying immediately why because most of the objections has been handled okay so objection handling is a big part of sales closing trust me when i say that so if you know how to handle objection closing become easy it, in fact closing a sale comes naturally to you okay so now that you've understood what closing a sale is let's now talk about objection because closing a sale is your ability to get people to make payments to pay your ability to demand for the money in their pockets to pay when they've already made a buying decision okay so let's talk about the objection what are objections now objections are consigned raised by a prospect that is preventing them from making a buying decision or taking action on an already made buying decision okay some people have objections that stops them from making a buying decision why some have objections that stop them from from taking action on a buying decision they've already made so you need to know the different types of objection okay so it's important that you know what an objection is so that you will be able to handle it because objection is not equal to rejection no that's a mistake a lot of people make objection is not rejection rejection is different objection is different now an objection is an opportunity a prospect a customer gives to you to educate them is an opportunity for you to educate a potential client an objection is a silent way they are using to tell you that ah this thing you're saying i need more information i don't understand it so whenever you are trying to make a sale and you are trying to close in on someone and they give you objection there are different kinds of objection i don't have money let me go and pray about it let me go and speak to my spouse let me go and think about it all those things are objection they are silent way of your prospects telling you please i need more information okay so when people present you with an objection is an opportunity for you to educate them and clarify things for them it does not mean that they are they are becoming they are rejecting you no it does not mean that you have to become defensive no this is where you validate their idea and make them feel understood all right so how do you do this how do you validate their idea how do you make them feel understood now you can start your response to any question they give you as an objection for example you can start your response to their question by saying ah i know exactly how you feel i have felt this before when i was in your position but here is what i found out this is what we call the feel felt found principle of closing a sale Get your prospect understood. Let them feel understood and tell them why they need to change their perspective. Trust me, when you, when you say these words using this um, framework, I know how you feel. I have felt that before. But this is what I discovered. This is what I found to whatever objection you are giving them. It could be that you are using a scenario of your story or the story of someone you know to do or to to answer their question using this framework all right it works like magic trust me on that so every objection is not equal to rejection i'll repeat that every objection is not equal to rejection but an opportunity for you to educate your customers or your clients because objections are the indirect way a potential customer or client is saying hey I don't understand this yet. I need more information to gain, to gain clarity. But the funny part is that they won't come out boldly and tell you, I don't understand. I need more information. Rather, they will rather feel comfortable giving you an objection. Okay, so most times when people give you an objection, they are not rejecting you. No, it's just a way of them to give an excuse for you to end a conversation with them so that they can go their way. Okay, so always bear in mind that every objection you receive from your prospective customers or clients is an opportunity for you to further educate and inform them of what you are talking about. Okay, so let's do an exercise right now. Who is ready? All right, so I need each and every one of you listening to me right now. List for me in the comment section the different types of objections you've been receiving from people. Let me show you how to handle them. Just list as many as you can. I'm going to answer one or two or three. But like I said, the same framework, the few felt found principle. 
using it, backing it up with a story, either your personal story or the story of someone. Okay, I can see the first one. They said the objection of is too expensive. Now, when you're trying to sell something to your customer or your clients, whatever it is you're selling, and they tell you, no, this is too expensive. Do you know why they are telling you it's too expensive? It's because you've not built you've not shown them enough value you've not built your value ladder all right you've not shown them enough value for example in my services i run a digital business growth agency so for example i'm trying to run um, uh, um let's say someone is trying to pay for my i'm trying to get a client to pay for my branding um my branding services for their business and they, and I tell the person this is 150,000 and the person say oh no it's too expensive I tell the person now I understand you yes you are correct it's too expensive it's expensive and I understand you I understand how you feel I have felt that before but this is what I found out by the time I take it by the time I design I, I work on your business branding I work on your business branding in a way that you'll be able to communicate effectively your brand message to people in a way that you'll be findable, in a way that you'll be visible, in a way that people can understand and identify you across the internet. And not just that, you can also use the strategy I'm going to create for you to even run your businesses online and at the same time offline. Your brand communicates a lot of message. Now, by the time I break down every benefit of what the services I'll be offering them on their branding, now they will now see that the value they are gaining is here. And I'll, at the end of the day, I'll tell them that this is priced 150000 But because of you right now, I'm making you an offer to pay for, to pay at seven at a fee of 70000 instead of 150000 Now, guess what? I've moved the value of, of the brand, of my service here, and the price here. They are no longer looking at the price, but they are looking at the value. Now, when people tell you something is too expensive, it's because you've not given them and you've not shown them enough value of that particular product or service so build up your value ladder all right when you build up your value ladder you see people will buy okay so that is how to handle it if someone tell you i am busy i don't have time tell them i understand how you feel i felt that before i could remember when i was working juggling nine to five as a as a mother and at the same time i have kids i have husband but this is what i found out i discovered that being a mother being i discovered that being a woman is very is very very tedious and at the same time there there comes a time in your life when you are going to need financial finances and you don't need to look out there comes a time in your life when you're going to be in a financial crisis and at this point your husband may not be there to help you your children may not be there to help you and at that point it will dawn on you that you are your own rescue nobody's coming to save you why don't you dis dedicate one hour every day to building something aside you have 24 hours in a day and even when you're at work, it's not the whole eight hours at work that you utilize working. Can you sacrifice one hour every day building a business that can generate cash flow for you? Just focus on building it 30 to 90 days and allow the system run by itself and generate cash flow for you. Won't this be interest? Won't this be great for you? Or won't this be nice for you? I'm not married. I'm just trying to cook up something in my head. So... Now, is it that you use your own story or you use someone else's story to tackle that objection? All right? Because they just need clarity on how it's going to work for them. They just need to see the possibility in their head. That is all it. When they tell you, let me go and pray about it, tell them you are right to pray about it. But you need to know that God has created you and has given you the wisdom and everything you need and even the help you're looking for from God. God uses men. They, that is what they call the gift of men. He uses men to answer people's prayer. This is the opportunity you've been praying for. Okay? So whatever objection people give you, just use the few felt found principle, tailor it to a story, or tailor it to someone else's story, and give them clarity. 
all right so i don't have enough time i would have loved to answer all the um objections you guys dropped but keep dropping it in the comments i'm going to answer you one by one in the comments okay so i need you to know that when you're handling objection on a one-on-one -on -one base with a client you need to you need to answer an objection one at a time if if if, if you're if you are one, talking to someone one on one right now and they ask you three different objections, don't answer three of them at a time. No, the, that's the secret I want to unveil to you. Answer one because once you answer, once you once you answer it, don't you don't need to say anything again. Once you're done answering the objection, don't say anything again. Just keep quiet and allow your prospect to speak. You once you're done answering the first objection, keep quiet and allow them to speak. Don't break the silence because there's this there's this game there's this psychology that says he who breaks the silence wins but sometimes there are some cases that that does not apply you need to be aggressive okay but when you answer that's what some people say it works it doesn't work sometimes so when you handle an objection when it's a one-on-one -on -one basis keep quiet handle one part time then once you answer keep quiet and let your prospect answer because once he answers you've won the game okay but when you are in a crowd a crowd presentation the style is different okay you just have to handle them if you are smart enough knowing what they are and handle them in your presentation okay so if you want a one-on-one -on -one section where you want me to practically teach you how to handle objection and how to close a sale send a dm or use the link in the description section or in my bio to book a one-on-one -on -one section with me all right so don't forget to like this video subscribe or follow this page and turn on your post notification for more episode with for more um, epic sections with myself eminent augusta and for those of you that missed out on the digital marketing proficiency program certification we had the last time the next cohort will be starting in seven days do well to use the link below i'll be dropping a link that gives you a 50 percent discount for you to enroll in the next cohort that will be starting in a few days time thank you very much and see you in our next live section. Bye.